What a coincidence that I uh, just made a video about Game of Thrones and all of a sudden the House of the Dragon trailer released. See, I had a rumor that we were gonna get a trailer in December, like an actual trailer, but they surprised me and they dropped a teaser now. The show's coming out in 2022. Probably gonna be the same thing as Game of Thrones where it's usually released in the summer. I can't remember if I've mentioned this in my previous Game of Thrones videos and just in case I have it, I'll say it, but if I have said it, I'll say it again. I'm all for new Game of Thrones type shows. I want more content from that world. So I'm good with new stories being told. I will say, I am a little skeptical about this new show, and I think there are decent reasons why I am. But overall, I am, of course, looking forward to the show. Unfortunately, I won't show the trailer in this video if you haven't seen it yet, because HBO is a division of Warner Brothers, and the last thing I wanna have to go through is being copyright claimed, because Warner Brothers loves doing that to people who like to show off trailers for them. If you haven't seen it, just type in House of the Dragon and you'll find it. All right. So first thing I want to talk about is the intro and not of the trailer of the actual show You get a taste in the trailer of what to expect It's going to be more than likely just as bloody and gruesome and violent and Overall dangerous the way Game of Thrones was it's going to be just like that what makes Game of Thrones so special I did mention this in my previous video it is all about the music. The music is something that no matter how you feel about how Game of Thrones ended or how you feel about the show in general, the music is what defines Game of Thrones. And you could say that about a lot of movies and TV shows, but Game of Thrones especially. Is it going to have a beginning like Game of Thrones where it takes you through the world map of Westeros and it shows you some of the most popular homes from the Seven Kingdoms? Are they gonna have something like that? and will it be a new intro song? What I was going to say is I just looked it up to make sure it was Raman actually doing the music because if it wasn't him, I was gonna say the person doing the music has a tough test ahead of them because at the end of the day, when we think of Game of Thrones, the most popular song used in that show is the theme song, the very beginning of it. It is so catchy and it just sums up Game of Thrones. So I'm wondering, are they gonna be using the same intro, the same song for the intro, or is he creating something brand new for the House of Dragon? That's gonna be really interesting. But now that I know Raman's coming back for the music producing, I feel comfortable with no matter what he decides, it's gonna be good. He's on a level of, in my opinion, Hans Zimmer. He's that good. So I'm not worried there anymore. Now, what I'm wondering about the show is what houses are going to be involved. I mean, obviously the Targaryens, it's gonna be all about them. I would assume we're gonna have a couple Lannisters in there as well. We might even have household holds that were no longer big in Game of Thrones, or maybe their entire house died during this event. I would love to see some Starks pop up from time to time. I think a lot of us want to see Starks in general. The Stark household is the most prominent and popular household of all of them, but I would like to know if we're gonna see stuff like the Tyrells, or maybe the Tullys, the Greyjoys, or the Freys. I don't know exactly what we're gonna be seeing, but I I can say for sure that we will probably be getting a couple of Lannisters, at least one Lannister. They gotta be involved in this story in some way because their family was already serving the Iron Throne even before Robert Baratheon and before him, the Mad King. And the Mad King was a Targaryen, so the Lannisters have been tied into the Iron Throne for a long time. And perfect casting choice getting Matt Smith in this project. Matt Smith just looks like a Targaryen in general, so I'm super down for him being in this show. Now, something I'm really hoping this show continues off of is the vibe Game of Thrones gives you. And yes, I understand we are in the same realm of Game of Thrones. We're in a prequel show, but now it's new showrunners other than George R. Martin, of course. There's new actors and actresses. I'm sure there's tons of new producers and everybody else in the background who are involved in this new show. And even though I do talk a lot of shit about DB and Dave, 
I will say that when they were good, there was a vibe of Game of Thrones that they had that is so appealing to all of us. And I'm really hoping that the House of the Dragon can cling on to that. I will say that right at the end of the trailer, when someone is walking up to the Iron Throne and you see the Iron Throne, of course, made of swords, but all of these other swords sticking up like spikes that were melted onto the ground, it's going to be good to see the throne room again. The more I think about Game of Thrones and now that Game of Thrones is done, that's actually one of my most missed sceneries of all of Game of Thrones is when that show ended, I realized like, oh man, we're never going to see the Iron Throne again. Like Drogon completely burned it to the ground. There's a massive hole in the wall now and I mean, we're just never going to be able to see that moving forward. So I'm really glad that, you know, we're going to be having some of these beautiful sceneries come back into the show once again. And who knows, maybe if some of the houses are dealt more prominently other than just the Targaryens, we might see Castle Rock, or we might see Highgarden, which is the Tyrells household, or we might see Winterfell, who knows. But I'm just so glad that we're going to be able to see some of these very popular destinations again. Now, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, because I've been talking about how excited I am for the show and what I'm looking forward to and what I want to see. But now I'm going to talk about what makes me very cautious about this show. So there's two things, and starting with the first one, which is the quicker one, the showrunner, besides George R., is a man named Ryan Condal, and he hasn't done tons of things. But two of the biggest projects he's worked on, he was the writer for both of them. Both of these movies starred Dwayne Johnson, but both of them ended up being pretty bad. One was Hercules with Dwayne Johnson, and the other one was Rampage with Dwayne Johnson. I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, those are terrible, so this is gonna be terrible. I mean, I don't know. I, he might have a great story to tell here. I'm just looking at his track record, and it does make me a little bit nervous. I'm not exactly sure if the writing will exactly be there. I'm not really sure if it's going to be produced properly. So I just looked right now and there's three people who are getting writing credits for the show. It's Ryan, George R, and a third person, Charmaine the Grot. Hope I said that right. That person happened to do The 100 on Netflix, a show I've never seen, but a show I've heard a lot of people like. So. I, I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Then the second point I wanted to make was just the fact that it's a prequel. I can be very picky on prequels. Not everything needs a prequel, especially when you make a movie or a show or a video game. Sometimes you just don't need a prequel taking place before that. You could easily get away with making prequels in the form of a book or an animation series, or a comic book. You don't always need to make this big budget TV show, movie, or video game type of series to make a prequel that is just eventually followed up by what we all have just seen. So I'm not sitting here and saying there's not a story to tell about the Targaryens and their dynasty ruling over the Seven Kingdoms. I'm not saying that there isn't going to be some compelling character storytelling. I'm not saying that it's not going to be exciting. More so, what I'm trying to point out is the fact that it's only 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones. And I know in a lot of ways, 200 years is quite some time before Game of Thrones. We do know how this ends. It does end with the Mad King losing his spot and the Baratheons moving in. We've seen what happens it's Game of Thrones. I almost feel like it's one of those types of shows that, and I hope they prove me wrong. I want to be proven wrong. I just don't want it to be the type of show that fills in small little hidden spots that are like, I bet you didn't know this, and I bet you didn't know this. Does it mean anything for the future? No, not really, but I bet you didn't know it. I also hope it just doesn't mean that we're getting this show because they wanted to make more content about dragons. They could make another show involving dragons that hold 
a much bigger part within the realm of Game of Thrones. And I think just to simply sum it up is the fact that we know the Targaryens eventually lose their place on the throne. We know Ned and Rob lead a rebellion against King's Landing. We know Jaime kills the last Targaryen so that someone new can rule. We know all of that. We know the Targaryens don't last after those 200 years. I want to know if there is a bigger story here and why we are getting this show, or if this show is to simply just be like, hey, here's a Targaryen show. I mean, this is looking very far into the future, but my questions now are, how long is this show gonna last? Are they planning this to be another eight season show, 10 season show? Is it a four season show? Like. I don't know how many seasons and how far ahead they've planned for it. I wonder if they could possibly do something where maybe this is all being seen from the eyes of Bran because he can journey into the past and watch everything. So I wonder if they have considered that maybe we are being shown what's happening because Bran, for whatever reason, has decided to go into the past to watch the past. I don't know. Overall, as of right now, I am looking forward to it. And come the summer of 2022, which I would assume is the season they will drop it next year, I really do hope it delivers. But now it is your turn to let me know what you think of the show, what you thought of the teaser trailer, and if you are excited or not. Just like usual, everyone, if you did like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all the content I got coming out on this channel. And I did say at the end of the last video, to stay warm because winter is coming. I might have been a little too quick to jump on that. You might want to dress a little cooler because I think fire and blood is coming this time. All right, see ya.